This is Twit. Uh, so, a listener of ours, James Tutton, shot me a note asking whether I may have found my 50 Bitcoin when he saw an article about 50 Bitcoin having been moved from a long dormant wallet. Now, yeah, I wish that was my 50 Bitcoin, but I've satisfied myself that they're long gone. But I thought our listeners would enjoy hearing about the general topic of ancient Bitcoin movement. The article, which appeared last Thursday at CryptoNews.com, was titled Satoshi Era Bitcoin Wallet Awakens. Wow. When did you, when 50, did you uh, make your 50 Bitcoins uh, strike? It was February early on. February 9th of 2011. Okay. So it was one year after yeah. this. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it was early, but yeah. it was not this early. Okay. Um, so they, they, they said Satoshi Era Bitcoin Wallet Awakens moves 50 Bitcoin to Binance. And the, the, the crypto news piece starts out saying a Satoshi Era Bitcoin wallet address dormant for 14 years transferred 50 Bitcoin, approximately 3.05 million U.S. dollars to the Binance exchange on June 27th, last Thursday. The wallet is believed to belong to a Bitcoin miner who likely earned the 50 Bitcoin as mining rewards in 2010. <laughs> this must make you cry. Oh, I know. <laughs> believe me. It's like, you know, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, gosh, yeah. It, is, it hurts. Yeah. They said on-chain analytics firm Look On Chain revealed the Bitcoin wallet's origins. It's linked to a miner who received 50 Bitcoin as a mining reward on July 14th, 2010, just months after the Bitcoin network launched. And I'll, I'll note that my podcast, which Tom Merritt and I did, which was titled Bitcoin Cryptocurrency, where I explained the operation of the entire Bitcoin cryptocurrency system, how the blockchain works and, and all that, that aired the following February 9th of 2011. Oh, wow, we were really early on that. Wow. We were on the ball. Yeah. So while it's true that solving the Bitcoin hash problem way back then resulted in an award of 50 Bitcoin, my 50 were different from the 50 that were recently moved. The article continues, back in 2010, one Bitcoin, <laughs> oh, and this explains why I formatted my hard drive, was valued at a mere $0.003 or 0 0.3 cents. So right? this so, was, I mean, this it was, was all a, just a nickel's you know, worth of Bitcoin. It wasn't worth worrying yeah. about. Yeah. Well, and remember the faucet, the Bitcoin faucet was dripping out Bitcoin right. that anybody could go, go, yeah. go get for yeah. free. Yeah. Right. So. They said this price was not surpassed until February of 2011, reaching $30 by June of that year. Today, Bitcoin <laughs> today Bitcoin trades around $61,000, which is a which they say is a 17% drop from its all-time high in mid-March of this year of 73 <sighs> thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars per coin wow <sighs> satoshi bitcoin wallets satoshi bitcoin wallets they write which were created during bitcoin's infancy from 2009 to 2011 hold historical significance this period marked the time when bitcoin's enigmatic creator Satoshi Nakamoto was still an active presence in the cryptocurrency community. The wallet's historical value, coupled with the limited transactions during that era, makes any movement of funds from them a notable event. In 2010, Bitcoin mining was accessible to anyone with a personal computer, yielding a reward of 50 Bitcoin. This accessibility stands in stark contrast to the current Bitcoin mining environment. Four halving events, you know, as in cut in half, have since reduced the block reward to a mere 3.125 Bitcoin. On the other hand, the Bitcoins are worth 60 grand, so not so mere. 
It gets harder to, having, to get a block to make a block, though, too. Right? Oh, the math is much harder. It's virtually impossible. Yeah, yeah. Um, these halvings occurring roughly every four years are integral to Bitcoin's deflationary model. This recent transfer from a Satoshi Bitcoin wallet is not an isolated incident. It joins a growing list of dormant wallets springing back to life. And, of course, we know why they're springing. It's because Bitcoin is, is jumping. So, you know, multiplying the number of Bitcoins, which were easily earned back then by 60,000, will definitely put a spring in yeah. one's step. Yeah. Huh. So they wrote, in March, a similar event occurred. A miner transferred 50 Bitcoin earned from mining on April 25th, 2010 to Coinbase after 14 years of wallet inactivity. The reactivation of these wallets often stirs interest and speculation within the cryptocurrency community. Many are curious about the intentions behind these moves, whether they signal a change in market dynamics or simply represent a longtime holder finally deciding to liquidate their assets. Bitcoin whales, individuals or entities holding vast quantities of Bitcoin, possess the capacity to influence the cryptocurrency market through their sheer trading volume and holdings. Two such whale wallets, dormant for a decade, sprang to life on May 12th of 2024, transferring a combined 1,000 Bitcoin. On September 12th and 13th of 2013, when Bitcoin was trading at $1.24, each of these two wallets received 500 Bitcoin, which was valued at $62,000 back then. In another noteworthy, noteworthy event on May 6th, a Bitcoin whale moved four, um, oh, $43.893 million dollars worth of Bitcoin mm. to two wallet addresses. This whale had remained inactive for over 10 years, having initially received the Bitcoin on January 12th, 2014, when it traded at $917. This is why it's so, hard, though, because had you had those 50 Bitcoin, when it got to, say, worth $100,000, you would have for sure sold it. You would right. have said, oh, I'll take the money. That's great. I'm happy. Right. And, and that's why, la and that's why last week's podcast about when is a bad pseudo random number generator right. a, good, <laughs> a thing. good thing. It kept that guy right. from decrypting his wallet and selling his Bitcoin until you know far later when it became you know worth paying some hackers. We don't know what percentage they took, but you know it, it would have been nothing if this guy hadn't right. had them crack his password. Many have offered to crack my password. All have failed because it's probably a good password and it's not, you know, it's not, it's not, if it's not a, if it's a random password, it's not, and it's done well, which it was, uh, you know, using Bitcoin, um, the Bitcoin wallet. Um, it's virtually Technology. impossible yep. to, to, yep. to, to you know, brute force. So, uh, salt, salted and right. memory hard and, right. and slow to do and so forth. But someday, yeah. you know, I figure if, <laughs> this is just a forced savings account. Someday those eight Bitcoin will be mine. <laughs> I don't know. I'll guess the password because I must have come up with something. I know. Why wouldn't I record it? Right. I'm sure I know mine. Yeah, because that's what's back sad. then. Yeah, ba yes, back then I, we I, we we were not fully up to speed on generating passwords at random and having password managers hold on to them. Right. So right. I could guess my own password. I've so tried all of the I, 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 dopey passwords I used by rote back in the day, and none of those worked. So maybe I was. Smarter. And did you rule out monkey one two three? I did immediately. Okay, it's <laughs> the first okay. one I tried. <laughs> Oh, well, those eight Bitcoin are just going to sit there for a while. It's interesting that 50 is enough to make a news story. That's really amazing. Yes, and Leo, there are there is so much Bitcoin oh, that yeah. has been lost. I mean, right. so many people did this. Right. I'm, you know, I'm not a unique, you know, hard luck case <laughs> at all. And besides, I'm doing fine. So, but you know, a lot of people. And, and remember when there, we had some of our listeners come up to us in Boston 
when when we were there for the Boston event, there was one guy in particular who said, thank you for that podcast. I retired a long time oh ago. Oh, my gosh. Thank, oh my thanks gosh. to listening to the Security Now podcast. What you said made a lot of sense. I, I got going. I mined a bunch of Bitcoin. And wow. uh, I don't have to work anymore for the rest of my wow. life. That's just good luck. Good fortune. It is, well, yeah. yeah. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below. <laughs>